um, it's the tip of the iceberg, the work I do, because every different country, different situation, different family, different child needs individual individual attention and individual stories. I'm here to run workshops to help people write their own therapeutic stories. A therapeutic story um, is um, a story that, that takes a situation and now we need to understand a bit about behaviour. First of all, um, we have to get away from the idea that children are, are naughty or good. Children may have inappropriate behaviours, but they are good. Um, and so we, are, we look at the behaviour as separate and, and stories are one of many strategies that can help heal or help a, an inappropriate or out of balance behaviour. And through children hearing a journey and a story, they hear how a behaviour comes back into balance. But it is, it is worked in such a way where you're, you're using metaphor, it is speaking to the unconscious, it's like it's coming in another door for the child, instead of saying, well, we don't want you to steal, we want you to be more honest, um, and this is what you should do. A story is not a way, a giving a lecture, a story is giving a, a therapeutic message, and, and um, in, a, in a, well, a softer way, but and in a way that speaks to children, because children work in the language of stories. Um, there's a lot of therapy work that works out of fairy tales and, and myths and legends, and that is important work too. But um, there's also a whole field of work where we can write stories for individual children or for a whole class of children for a particular reason. And if you were to try and find a story for some unusual situation, perhaps even you might look at a class that doesn't really know, a class of seven-year-olds that don't really know how to help when it comes to tidying up and helping tidy the room. It would be hard to find a fairy tale for that. And yet, through um, inspiring children through a story, we can shift their behaviour into them being more helpful. It can be that simple. So what kind of people come to your workshops? Are they teachers mostly? Um, it's, a, it's a very broad spectrum. Parents, teachers, therapists, school counsellors, grandparents. Um, I've even had a few teenagers. In Africa I ran workshops for Medicine Sans Frontier and in um, that workshop I had the counsellors and I also had the, the people who were dying of AIDS and they came to work on their own story. There's many possibilities. In my workshops I start with some examples of stories that have had a healing, a therapeutic effect and then together in the group we deconstruct the examples. We look at the metaphors in the story, we look at the how the story journey was constructed, how the tension is built and we look at the resolution. And then I do quite a bit of work with metaphor. I do work, work with exercises with metaphor. I have them in small groups working on some different exercises. And then by the end of the workshop, they are in small groups writing their own stories. Then they come back together in the large group and share what they have done. Well, I would like to acknowledge that my work, I feel, rests on the thousands of years of humanity working out of story. And um, I had many years of my life as a Waldorf teacher and I really acknowledge that that brought that to my consciousness, the importance of stories and how we can teach story-centered curriculum, stories at the heart of our teaching. And from that I set up a whole university program in Australia that helps teachers, all kinds of teachers, work that way. So I'd like to acknowledge that that is how my work has come about.